WGLNA. We're having a lot of fun here as we just finished our third match of Turtle Police versus Bear Huggers, where Turtle Police earned their first victory in the league. They are now one and two. Bear Huggers, unfortunately, zero and three. But the league play will still continue for two more weeks after tonight. It's going to be a lot more exciting matches, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the matches we have tonight. It's going to be Scurry Hard versus Refuse to Die and Fulcrum Gaming versus Simple Tankers. And apparently Scurry Hard... Uh, scurry herd. Scurry herd. Scurry hard <laughs> is much more famous than Fulcrum because random people know that scurry hard are undefeated. They scurry hard. That's right. That's Boom. right. Uh, Rue Kill. Refuse to die. Scurry hard. Refuse to die. Dark horse of the tournament we've decided when we were moving into the group stages or the group drawing because they're a team that has performed well you know, in the past, at least in the qualifiers, but... Um, hasn't proved themselves yet, just you know, as a lot of these other teams have. But they've been proving themselves very well so far. I mean, yes, they did lose to River of Blood two to three, but River of Blood was impressed with their play. That was still two to three, and two to three just means that y the difference is is minute in the fact that maybe one of those teams just made a little wrong move that might have thrown the match. It it went. It could have gone either way in s in those matches. You mm -hmm. guys were watching, so. I th I think they can really make it. I and think they have the potential to go top eight. I think I think so as well. Any of these teams still do, but it's going to be harder for the last two teams that we saw. However, they did beat Casadori three zero, and Scurry Hard is undefeated at this time. They defeated Casadori three to two, and River of Blood three to zero, and we have both of the commanders on the line in the face off. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Refuse to die. A bag of kittens. I'm going to start with you. You have, one, an awesome name, but two, impressed everyone in the league, not just your fellow compatriots that you play against, but also people here in the production studio here at WGLNA. How do you feel so far for your play in season one? Uh, you know, I think every day we, we get a little bit better. Um, every time we go into a fight, uh, we're always playing good teams, and you know, we, always, we always do debriefs and you know, pick out things that we could do better. Um, and uh, I think going into qualifier two, we we did a lot of scrims with Scurry Hard. So I know tonight's going to be a very interesting battle, to say the least. <laughs> and uh, or at least I hope we we make it entertaining. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm I'm getting pretty pumped for the the next few weeks. Now you have gone back and reviewed to see how you can do better. But what do you think is your greatest strength as a team? Um, I think actually probably our greatest strength is that we're actually a really new team. Um, I think that means that we don't have, we're not, none of us are set in our ways. So everybody on my team is pretty open to, uh, you know, to, to listening to what I have to say, to listening to what uh, other team captains have to say, and, and even listening to the commentary that you guys point out, because uh, more often than not, you guys see stuff that we don't, and uh, we definitely go back and listen to that too. And finally, a bag of kittens, what would you like to say against your opponents before your match begins? I can't. I can't say anything bad about them. I mean, uh, we come from the same plan. We've we scrimmed together before. He's a marine. I'm a corpsman. That's kind of a bond you don't really mess with. So uh, very true. I'm just really looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. Well, that's weird because right before this, you said you're going to crush every squirrel that you come across. So it doesn't make yeah. sense to me. I don't know if kittens can do that to squirrels, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if they can catch them. If they can catch them. All right. <laughs> Refuse to die, bag of kittens. Thank you. We're going to talk now to Squirrelin from Scurry Hard. Squirrelin, again, thank you for your service. And to both of you, thank you for your service in the United States military. But now you're here playing World of Tanks. How does it feel to make it so far to be undefeated in the league? It feels pretty good um, with the new group I have. I actually did not expect to come in. We had a little, Cazadores, we had a little issues going two hours match. That was tiring, but we came back against River of Blood to just 3-0 it real quick, simple. And I'm looking forward to keep doing that. Um, and it just the teams come together and going undefeated, I think we can really show the higher teams a little bit of a challenge for them. Now that uh, nice lady that our intern Terry is able to speak to says that Scurry Hard never loses. Are you going to honor her words and continue winning in the league play? <laughs> we will. D I can't make promises, but I will give you my word. We will do our best to go th and keep winning. And do you have any words for your opponent, Bag of Kittens, and his team refuse to die? 
Um, like you said, we can't really say anything bad because we did scrim them to get, help them get into qual two and to make them better than they were in qual one. So I can really just say good luck, and it should really be interesting since we know what each other are capable of. All right, it's time for the coin toss. Refuse to die. You have the higher seed, so let's call in the air, heads or tails. Um, we'll pick tails. He picks tails. Let's flip the coin. It is heads, which means scurry hard, squirrelin'. You will have the map choice. What is your map selection? Himmels. Himmelsdorf will be the map. Refuse to die. Your position choice? I'll take south. South. Just like, <laughs> just like old times. I missed a few <laughs> times. <laughs> All right. Scurry Hard has chosen Himmelsdorf, and a bag of kittens will spawn to the south position. Best of luck to you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Nice to have, I believe, as a Marine and a Corman facing off against each other. Uh, if you are a United States Marine and you are injured, you shout Corman. You don't shout Medic because that is who's going to help you. Unless you're working with the Army and that's the closest thing you see, then you shout Medic. I do not know that. Yeah, well, Navy Corman, they are incredible at their jobs. They work very, very hard and they see a lot of stuff, as I've been told. <laughs> All right, so again, let's talk about these teams. Cazadores, River of Blood have been the scalps that scurry hard or the squirrel tails that scurry hard have been able to Accomplished for themselves, uh, refused to die, tied 1-1 right now in their match victories. River of Blood, they were able to defeat, and Kaz Doors. Go ahead and take a look, actually, at the team roster for Refused to Die. Bag of Kittens, as you saw, the team leader. WW2, Fnatic, Anubis, Scringly, Quasar, Valkyrie, Riavawas. I need to talk to him to see how I pronounce that correctly. Uh, Lislan, Hired Gun 001, CM0712, and Justin Ward. It is Island, by the way. It is Island? It is Island. He, he uses an L. But it's lowercase inside, and then we capitalize everything. Oh, I see. So you can say island. Cool. Good to know. Cool. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, and let's go ahead and jump over to the other team roster for Scurry Hard. We have Squirrelin, the team leader. Blazzy, Son of Hail, Squirrel Tag, Hneka, Dodama, or Dodoma. I have to ask him how to pronounce it. I like Dodama better saying it. it sounds I've always called him Dodama. Dodama? Dodoma. I've always called him Dodoma as well. Yeah. Rylak. But it's okay, Clutch. You can call him whatever you want. I like Dodama, just like I like Moadib more than... Yeah. We actually, we started calling him that. I like Modable, yeah. Modable more than Moadib. Yeah. Okay, Floppy Giraffe, that's a name we're all going to remember. Awesome. Tofu Smurf, who we were able to meet at E3. And Thorn, 1-1-2-2 one, one, two, two on the side of Scurry Hard. Now, I asked one of the teams uh, before if they changed out. I asked Turtle Police if they changed up the different uh, rosters, and they do. And we have noticed in different teams that they will switch out here and there, one person for another. Rook Hill, why is that? Why not stick with the same seven? Why would you want to have a pool of ten? You know, some people have these things that we call real lives. Oh, some people right. have jobs that's that right. have they no have to work at all day, 40 <laughs> hours a week. They can't come to every match. And until they go professional or get sponsorships and stuff, until they can be financially, you know, independent, it's going to be hard to go pro. But I if mean, you did have all ten ready yeah. and available – how would you make the selection of the seven, and would you change it up? Do you have some people that are better at city maps compared to open Definitely, maps? definitely, yeah. If you've got ten guys, there are definitely people in your lineup who play an arty piece so much better than anyone else, and if you were bringing an arty, you'd say, put this guy in it. You wouldn't put your heavy driver in an arty piece when you have that kind of skill lying around. So yeah. that's that's part of the way you build your team. Ten people can mean you can have a perfect lineup for a city map, then a perfect lineup for an open map. You can bench people, give them a break, give them a rest, and especially if it gets drawn out and long. I mean, 10 people, you want some guys are just going to need to take a break for a minute. Yeah, it's very true. Mm. And it can, the stress can be very, very highly inducing, especially yeah. if you have to hold the line in an auto loader and take down three tanks in a row. You're like, dude, I need a break. Yeah. I need to get some water, get some snacks, take one of the games uh, for me, somebody else. Floppy Giraffe, jump in there, man. Just like in real sports, you have somebody yeah. on the bench, you have somebody on the sidelines, somebody's tired, needs a break, you switch them in so they're fresh. Ready to go. You ever just like get to the end of a game and just like, that was too much. <laughs> I need to take a second here. My heart's beating out of my chest. Yeah, and I remember I remember a football game where w we lost, and it was very, very emotional because we made it very, very far in the playoffs. And the only reason we lost is because the other team was physically bigger than us. They just were better corn-fed team. And I uh, it was just in Kansas at the time. And because of their physicality, it was really hard for us to push against them. We did lose, but we knew we gave it our all. And all these teams here are giving it their all tonight. And I'm sure it's going to be a great series between these two teams as we're going to get started with Himmelsdorf. It's going to be battle number one of Refuse to Die versus Scurry Hard. Let's go ahead and jump into the game.
Yu Sedai is sporting the KV5, ladies and gentlemen. As that's, again, something that we talked about earlier, but it has a 0% win rate so far in our league, WGLNA. Let's go ahead and look at the lineups completely. Three Amex 5100s and IS3, and that KV5 over on the side I refuse to die. On the other side, we have two Amex 5100s, two IS3s, and a T69 on the side of Scurry Hard. So obviously those IS3s coupled with the auto, li uh, auto loaders are going to be really, really essential and pretty conventional in this particular lineup for Himmelsdorf. Yeah, what do you what nothing do you think out of the, the ordinary five, here. By the way? Uh, I like it. I really do. And I think it can be employed properly, you know? It's just unfortunate that every team that's brought it so far has, has lost. Yeah. And I've seen wins before in other tournaments using the KV-5. Sure. It's just that today, I, oh, I guess this week, we have just haven't seen any wins out of players. That's right. I mean, we're talking about a week's worth of data. It's yeah. not really that much, but I'm going to point out that it has a 0% win rate so far. Also, yeah. the 110s have a ridiculously low win rate as well as they've been brought in both Himmelsdorf games and Ents games. I think it's mostly improper employment of those tanks. Okay. People want to play it like an IS-3. Y that's cool and all, but you're there if they would have brought an IS-3 anyway and lost, it would have been the same kind of thing because it's just a lack of proper play. You want to push with an IS-3, you want to push with an IS-10 and get in their face. Mm -hmm. but, pe but teams that bring 110s and IS-3s and lose, often more often than not, I'm thinking they're probably just not pushing hard enough and using them properly because... Yeah, can't blame it on yeah. the tank yet, Yeah. right? I mean, we still have a lot of games to go, but it's important to note, obviously, that they don't have the best win rates, whether that be just the metagame really not being advanced enough yet to use that the 110s or anything like that. It could yeah. be that, right? It could yeah. be just metagame not being developed well enough just yet. Although some people have system. argued that the IS-3 is a better choice of tank. I mean, I think I think Bitter has made a strong argument uh, in the back office about not liking the KV-5 and being like, why do, people, why do people even bring the KV-5? The IS-3 seems like such a better tank. I mean, the BL-9 is a great gun. And you See, I don't understand how he supports that and at the same time support so much the Jumbo Sherman. <laughs> You've got a point. The Jumbo Sherman, though, is kind of a cool tank. All right. Spotting has been happening across the courtyard for both of the T1s and now over on the hillside for both of these teams. It's a T1 scout fest at this time. You know, one of the stats I'd love to see, Greed Torp, is who out of all the T1s so far have done the most damage, uh, either altogether cumulative, cumulatively and in one match in particular. But right now, the scouting is what's important for both of these teams. And Squirrel Tag for the T1 has lost sight. Oh, nope, nope, nope. They've seen each other right now, right through that wall, that 50 meters or less rule in World of Tanks that you can see a tank that is within 50 meters of you no matter what. Dodoma is spotted right now, as you guys can see in the minimap. Just to let you guys know, to help you out, if a tank is in brackets, that actually tells you that it is being spotted by the other team. So it just gives you a little bit of reference to know exactly what each team sees. And as we can see, Quasi Quasiar is able to see Squirrel Tag and vice versa. Yep. On the west side again, we see that approach, but we see Refuse to Die now pulling back from the west side. Could they be going over to Tank Alley? Oh yeah, they are. The only other detection that they see right now on the map. I can't see them really pushing through the center, obviously, because that's no man's land. And going all the way up into the hill, well, the KV-5 will have a very long treacherous journey if he wants to do that. Even with the other tanks pushing from yeah, behind, it's going to take forever to get up there. Well, well, it's a slow time, man. Well, I want to point minutes. out, Valkyrie Vewas in the KV-5, mm -hmm. he's been spotted along with, th that's Scringly in the IS-3 Ooh. as they're retreating. So that indicates to Scurry Hard that there's some big motion going on. They might be... Uh, you might try something. Ooh, Blazzy is going to come up here and try and kill Quasar. Yeah, he's going to take down that T1. No problem whatsoever. So that's going to shut down the complete Do eastern some side. No. Oh, boom! Pushes him up against the wall, gets crunched. And off they go. Will they take the high road to spot? What is up from the castle side? Might be a little bit too far for them to spot, however, since they're up there. But they are spotting themselves at this time. And uh, now they no longer are. Mistake there made by Quasar is he caught himself caught out alone. He was pretty <laughs> much on an island, no one to support him, and no way to escape, which is, which is how the, we saw the, the, uh, the 5100 get up on the hill there and just yeah. kill him. You, you need to be able to ha escape as a T1. That's a big portion 
of what you need to be worrying about when you position yourself as a T1, what your escape routes are. Definitely so. And you can see uh, a really nice timing for that 5100 to go up on top of the hill because they saw all the other tanks recede back all the way into, what is that, like the J line. And when you do that, you can't really have that trigger to push the west side, take advantage of that eight tier points that you have moving on up over there. So right now they have repositioned back into a very defensive position, but the eyes on the map over on the side of, of what is, uh, refuse to die, of course. Refuse to die, their, their eyes on the map are cut down quite a bit. That's right, that KV-5 we've seen as a spearhead during the qualifiers is a moving wall to absorb a lot of the shots and to be the, the push, really, into enemy territory. We are not seeing that whatsoever. We're seeing this IS-3 creep along the edge of this house to see anyone trying to move down that two line at this time, but nothing so far has been spotted. And Screenly, and his awesome little decals you can see for Refuse to Die on the tanks, is in a good position to have a high Alpha Strike damage for anyone pushing down that corridor. However, if any of those Amex 5100s are able to get two shots on them, that is going to be an HP difference. That will be huge in a later on fight. The KV-5, however, with a higher HP pool compared to other tanks, could make up that difference with its positioning. But that comes down to some very, very, very crucial positioning for all of these tanks. Big moves here by Scurry Hard. They're going to begin their advance down the 2-3 line here, leading the way with Dodoma and Rylax. Son of Hail is going to move up into G3. He's going to try and proxy spot. I don't know if he's going to... No, he's not going to catch anyone over there. But the rest of Scurry Hard is going to group up here, and spots are going at it on the other side of the map. They're going to continue going forward to Doma and Rylak leading the way still. Where are they going to find Refuse to Die? That's a good question, because their scout tanks have been spotted on the east side, but now they're able to spot Anubis, who has been hit and, or has not been hit, but has been spotted, but screenly shots fired against him. He has been hit now. Uh, Rylak pushing into the IS-3, but not going all the way through, not fully committing, but now they're going to fully commit in that HP sharing position. Rylak took some hits himself. Odama now is going to move forward a little bit. No, Rylak will take the front position. Anubis from the other side trying to hit the AMX 5100 where NECA is. WW2 Fanatic and his AMX 5100 again trying to line up some shots, but NECA went back. Now no one is scouted except NECA at this right. time, so Valkyrie and the KV-5 is going to push ever so closer around that corner. Are we going to see the big trigger? Yes, the KV-5 going out, absorbing the first hit. IS-3s are going to do some nice alpha damage on it. Around 700 damage already done to that KV-5. IS-3s now are reloading, and guess what? They're going to be able to do around 700 more damage as soon as they turn this bend. Valkyrie View has missed that shot. He has a 466 HP at this time. But in the back is Blazzy and Squirrel, and they're going to be unload on these softer auto loaders. That is their job. KV-5 does go down, though. Yeah, it does go down, but Anubis trying to get the shots on Rylak. Rylak, 21 HP. Screenly does. No, Anubis gets a hit on that, but Ooh. World War II Fanatic gets the revenge kill against him. Dodama getting hit by Screenly at this time. World War II Fanatic trying to get some shots against that IS-3. However, the IS-3 has got a lot of HP, and Blazzy and his AMX 5100 is coming in to clean up what World War II Fanatic has left on the battlefield one more shot he's going to go down 90 hp 79 hp from that crash blazzy's probably reloading at this time dodama running up the shot in the is3 he goes down and now refuse to die has only one tank left it is screenly in the is3 and he is going to get killed in a matter of seconds 385 365 hp the surround from scurry hard death by squirrels will be the fate of this IS-3. One more shot, 96 HP, and Squirrelin, nope. Cap. It's a cap. Side of Scurry Hard. Congratulations to them. They will take the first battle win. When we come back, we're gonna take a look a little bit deeper onto what happened in that battle. Don't go away, you're tuning into WGLNA day number four. Are you ready? Welcome to the Wargaming.net League North America World of Tanks. Oh Capture. my god! It is time for North America to answer the call of esports. This could be it! Five seconds left to go! Oh no, he got it got at the last second! An amazing play! This is just a taste of what's to come. He's trying to turn it around. Big shots going down all oh over the place. Oh my the shot. Retorp, 
who has selected what tank? KV-5 yet again for refuse to die. Two T-69s, an Amex-1390, and a WZ-132. Two Amex-5100s, two T-32s, oh boy, and a WZ-132 over on the <laughs> side <laughs> of Scurry Hard. Now, one of those WZ-132s has been spotted at Blazzy, has been spotted on the side of refuse to die, trying to head up into the mines. The north side has pushed in here, and they're trying to get behind those rocks to get some great crossfire positioning against Scurry Hard. Scurry Hard and their heavy tanks has taken the frontal position up next to the hills, as one of the tanks all the way to the rear has actually taken a defensive position, position against any type of push from the lighthouse or the island. This is an L spread, I like to call it on this map, and as we see Valkyrie Vuis and Anubis locking down this side, they're gonna be stuck in a little bit of a corner here if they try to go around the hill. You have one of those heavy tanks and a light tank ready to pounce on. Now the one good thing about the KV-5 in this position is you can actually force your way up into the hill. You can always take map control, but it's gonna be at the cost of a good amount of HP, but still, you probably will be able to keep your KV-5 alive. Let's see what they do right now as, what is that tank in the middle right now that's coming the across? Blazzy, 132? Blazzy, okay. Yeah, he's in a 132. He's in the uh, the rock where tanks usually go to die. And <laughs> uh, hopefully death. he won't. Yeah, usually, although there's no arty here, so he's not going to die because of that. We, mines you commonly used to see one arty piece per team, mm -hmm. and they'd try and siege each other out because there's really great positions to hide. When you're when you're on mines, and especially many of them are already safe, so already had to kind of jockey for those kinds of spots, unless you brought a bison, and that's oh. why a bison was so com was so common on this map. However, now that it's tier three, teams don't bring it as much anymore. Yeah. It's not as point efficient, so you have these big slow games on mines like you used to have, but you don't have already, you know, trying to whittle down the enemy team until you can get a push in. There's okay. that KV-5, as Greetort mentioned. The moving wall, as I like to call it, of 1780 hit points. High hit point pool. Yep. Is that the most for a tier 8? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I'll write that actually down. actually ask Kill about that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I can't yeah, think I of anything in tier 8 with more, so. I mean, the, the closest thing that comes to my mind in terms of competitive play, of course, is the T-32. It does not have that much. IS-3 is 1,500. T-32 has 1,550. Yeah. AMX-5100 has 1,400. Uh, KV-5, 1,780. So of all the Tier 8 tanks that are used in eSports, that are favored in eSports, it is the highest HP pool. Yeah, I was just trying to think if there was some obscure tank that I'd managed yeah, to forget. Yeah, that's what I was no. thinking. Yeah. Uh, T-34, no. no. Um, that's the only other Tier 8 tank that I really play because I want to get all them credits. And if you guys want to get credits and gold, if you want to get gold and premium, make sure to send us some tweets and also follow us on Twitter at WGLNA or send us some comments on Facebook. We'd like to choose a winner once a night. Then we also have a production team looking at some funny ones that we put down in the ticker there. We'll send you 2,000 gold and seven days of premium. So what can the north side do right now with this hill control? I mean, they're clearly positioned three tier eight tanks all the way on the bottom east side of the map. But what can you really do with that? You know, from here, I'd be trying to pressure Blazzy. You see where he is on this rock? You can pressure him, and I'd be trying to spot him as much as I could using my high ground and trying to distract him and then trying to maybe get... Ooh, wow, nice shot from Blazzy on World War II Fnatic. This is, this is where he's not being pressured. If someone on the hill were pressuring Blazzy right now, he couldn't get these shots on World War II Fnatic, and World War II Fnatic might be able to move up to the same rock as Blazzy, and then they could kind of pressure him out, maybe get a little damage, a little sure. bit of a lead here. I mean, keep in mind, where where are Blazzy's real escape paths? Normally, it's going to be... Uh, it's not forward. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> definitely not forward. It's going to be backwards right around him, right, to his probably right it is side. Yeah, just right towards Zodoma. So yeah. you can see it right here on the screen. He just needs to retreat towards Zodoma. That's the way you get out. There's another rock he can try and slip behind if he feels, uh, if he feels really clever, uh, and that is to his you know, to his aft currently, where the back of his tank is facing. That's another little spot he could hide to, and it does have nice shots up towards the hill, but it's it's really not the best spot. Five minutes, 17 seconds left on the clock right now. No real action except hired gun being destroyed on the side of Refuse to Die, and a bag of kittens taking a little bit of damage. And each of these tanks just poking up and down on the top of these mountains, top of these little hills to see. Oh, we should go inside the mines and get some gold. That'd be awesome, but you can't. Um, to see who is going to poke out first and either land a hit or get fired upon. No movement on the east side for the blue team. They have locked down that hill position. No fighting either on the lighthouse or the island side. But this means as the clock runs down, one of these positions could move in. 
And when that wall breaks down, that will be huge for the opposing team if they're able to land their defensive shots first and move back, or if the opposing team is able to get their first alpha shots and do some serious damage to the opposite team HP pool and continue that volley fire, taking down the rest of those tanks. Also, target fire, very important here. If you're able to kill a tank, it means they have less DPM on their side. It means you get to live longer. And if you've played plenty of RPGs, you always want to target one enemy at a time. Learn that from Final Fantasy and Super Mario. Legend of the Seven Stars. Great games. You guys haven't played them. Old games. Is that... Uh, I'm not going to go Super ahead. Nintendo. Anyways. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, we do have a, a little bit of a rotation. Bad Kittens coming up here with the KV-5 Fanatic. Um, still haven't yet seen any kind of gesture to be aggressive. Uh, I ha I'm of the opinion it's very difficult if you're choosing a KV-5 to be aggressive. I think it's, you know, the KV-5, especially on open maps like this where there's a lot of position, you're going to be subject to the same problem that you had from last map on Himmelsdorf where the KV-5 is a slow moving wall. It does okay damage, a little bit less than, I, I would say, subpar. Um, but obviously it soaks up a lot of damage and against autoloaders it's fantastic. And we don't really have an autoloader format, actually only two autoloaders over on the side of Scurry Hard. Well, the damage that the KV-5 can output on the 107mm ZIS-6M is 300 HP potential and penetration. 300 average, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, so you're looking at 375 max mm. and 220, 225. 225 for lower min. in that range. 219's potential penetration. That's one yeah. of the biggest yeah, problems. Actually, uh, yeah, the, the penetration on the gold rounds is pretty weak. And that actually is one argument to not use the KV-5. The fact that it's a penetration for a tier 8 tank is kind of weak. And in pub matches, most people that most people's opinions that I've heard is run all gold. It's more worth it to just shoot all gold rounds because most of your ba most of your shots won't even pen mm -hmm. when you shoot normal AP. 167's penetration on the yeah. AP rounds. A lot of people complain KV5. about that. That is uh, that's the drawback, the con of that tank. You know, in comparison, AMX 5100 potential penetration on gold rounds 259. T32, which it does have some complaints. People like to complain about anything, but maybe on the 105, it's 245 potential penetration. And for none of the heavies that we see a lot, potential penetration on the IS-3, 265 with damage, 390 yep. on the IS-3. P gotta love the IS-3. Great pen on those gold rounds, and it hits so hard. That's you don't even need the gold rounds, too. That's yeah, yeah. The, the greatest part about the IS-3. I feel like you can make so much money off that IS-3 just because it's only like a 50-pen difference between uh, gold and non-gold. Yeah. Well, the uh, non-gold rounds for T-32 is 170. So in, in pub games, that's where yeah. some of the penetration complaints come from. <laughs> but every tank can't be as oh, awesome. Oh, here is a push. Oh, here we go. Squirrelin pushing in. Thank you, Rukil. All right, oh. now we got a push go coming from it. Scary Hard right into the mines. They're going to focus fire. Anything they can see, that KV-5 is a huge target for them. But Squirrelin and that guy have taken some damage. They have not landed anything against Refuse yeah. to Die in this push. Really intelligent play coming out from Refuse to Die. A lot of people would have actually gone in with the KV-5, but you have to realize, hey, you're a bunch of autoloaders. You don't have the ability to really kill everybody at the same time. So why don't we wait until the second round of burst damage and then use our KV-5 as the big meat shield. I like the amount of HP that they were able to trade out. And I feel like Refuse to Die was able to sprinkle in a lot of damage, but unfortunately this KV-5, he's just too big of a target. Yeah, he is. Oh no, 262 HP left. If they take down the KV-5, they will win on the tier point advantage with 40, 39 seconds left, 47 HP left. He's such a huge tank, he does go down. But there are some big misses in this fight. Right yes. now, Refuse to Die needs to be pushing. They it is time to, go. to push. That's go, Refuse to Die. That's exactly right. Um, they have to focus down, honestly, those those uh, T-32s first because they're the ones doing the damage. Meanwhile, the AMX 5100s are clipping. Uh, so just go for it. Of course, the WZ-132 as well. Here it we go. They're moving on up. And Anubis is taking a lot of shots in this AMX 1390. He should not be leading the charge. No, Rylak in the T-32 takes him down. Uh, takes him down really low as Blast. He executes him. Four seconds, three seconds left on the clock. 25 to 42. Scurry Hard still has the advantage, and it'll be a victory for Scurry Hard 2-0. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Abby. If you're seeing double, don't worry, don't check your eyes. It is correct. Both teams have the same exact 
lineup. Three Amex 5100s, two T69s, and two Tier 1s. Refuse to die starting to the north position as the red team. Rue Killer, we get to see at a round the bend battle between these two as they've chosen the same road. It uh, looks like it. I wonder where they'll meet, though, if they'll meet in E2 or F2. Place your bets. Mm. E2. F2. Remember, right. if Scurry Hard draws this out, it's actually a win for Scurry Hard for the series. Yep. Pressure's on for yes. Refuse to Die. They have to win this. If they can't win this, although it has a best for Refuse to Die, it has to go to a draw, right? Uh, if this in the is end, if the for the for the entire match. No, they can they can still win. They have to win twice. Yeah, if they win twice, yeah. it's a draw, yeah. and then they they play another match. They play another tank. It goes into overtime or uh, another tank, Battle. another yeah. map. And, so and it yeah, goes and then the overtime. overtime but so th if they win in overtime, mm -hmm. they can obviously win the series. Yeah, right now Scurry Hard is up 2-0, and it's been one draw. And the, since this is a best of five, Scurry Hard does win, or if they draw it out, I believe it will be a victory for them. Since uh, Refuse to Die can't, can't come back from that. They can't even draw. It would just be a loss. MX5100 Battle Buddies over here. You got Hired Gun, Fnatic, and of course Anubis. God of Embalming, I believe? That's a good question. I'm gonna, I've actually been thinking about that, the Egyptian gods. It um, is. It's the God of Embalming. Okay. I got um, you, bro. Uh, what's her name? Cleopatra. Nier? No, Nier is the God so. of Fate. <laughs> And you have other gods that they talk about in Stargate. I haven't watched that film in a long time either. I like that show. Kurt it's Russell. A good show. I've never watched the show. Kurt Russell kicks a lot of butt. Produces a lot of void rays too. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. All right. All right well, looks like uh, F2, G2, maybe H3 will be the position of engagement. Now both teams realized, hey, guess what's around the bend? The other team, when they're pointing their turrets right at us, the unfortunate souls. Well, now we're going to have two of the light tanks in the middle. Might be able to duke it out here, see some action. They do spot each other. Will they fire upon each other? Two T1s. Nope. Island against Squirrel Tag. Nope, they have a huge house right between them. Wow, I've never actually been there at a T1. I missed how he got there. Oh, I know how he got there. Oh, okay. Clever well, Squirrel. Clever. He climbed up that tree, probably, and then jumped over. I had a pet squirrel. We named him Chippy. Did really? he live? Yeah. Yes, uh, there was, oh, shots fire, nothing hit. Yeah, there was a mom squirrel in one of our trees. She had a fight with the cat, did not make it because her leg was broken, so we took care of her three babies. And two of them died, but one of them made it. So he was cool. They were very, very scared little pets, but Chippy was all right. Many people I've known who've gotten squirrels had problems because they, you know, they just didn't live very long. Yeah. The circumstances that they got them under usually were not too bright. Very well. Let's be honest. Squirrels are probably the most nervous animal. Yes. That God ever made. All, always okay? nervous, man. My goodness, I've never seen an animal that is more prone to heart problems in my life. <laughs> Sweet <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Well, talking about nerves, can imagine. Oh, nice. Look at this house. As you can see, this is where the bathroom would be. It is a uh, 1,500 square foot house, two different levels, solid brick, has withstood many air attacks. Beautiful window here. This is a child's room. Don't worry. There's usually glass. Can't open it. And downstairs we have the kitchen, which there's a gas stove. Where's the stairs? This is actually the master bedroom. I don't know where the stairs uh, are. The stairs have actually been blown apart, but don't worry. It's a fix-me-up. <laughs> a <laughs> fixer-upper. Yeah. There's no stairs in this house. It's currently, <laughs> it's currently <laughs> unlisted <laughs> due to the war, but the don't only, worry. The only person that can live there, is, or the only two people, are Squirrel Tag and Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they fight all the time. <laughs> they fight all the time. Yeah. Well, they still have spotted each other at the middle of the abbey here, but no shots have been able to land between these two different teams. 42 tier points still accumulated Ooh, for both. What is this? Whoa, hello. Who's moving around? Who's he moving around? Heavy tank to the top's moving. Fanatic. Let's check his view and see what's going on with him. Amex 5100, of course. Moving right around all the way to the eastern side it looks like as the t1 all the way on the bottom right hand corner has been scouting everything out zoning out the area and saying oh well there's nothing over here no problemo now here's the thing if um if there's any push along the west side i can guarantee that fanatic will not be there in time i think i'm going to <laughs> agree agree with that guarantee <laughs> yep <laughs> It's pretty hard to base yeah. a disagreement upon that logic. Well, 
the logic right now of refuse to die is to send one of their AMX 5100s down the 8 line to the south. And you know what? Why not? Why not send it? Because nothing has been scattered. They got one of the light tanks down there. And now it looks like one of the other light tanks, Island's going to follow him as well. Because he thought, I'm sick of this domestic dispute I've been having at the middle of the Abbey. And I'm going to go ahead and follow my friends on the other side. This is kind of cool. So what they're prepping is a big cap. And the AMX 5100 is going to just do a little bit of uh, damage as there are tanks that start to approach. I'm wondering if he's going to take the same position as where the Cazadores were to cover that cap. Looks like he has it'll, stopped. It'll be very similar, but you're going to see a much yeah, more aggressive stance from the other four tanks. The two T-69s and the AMX 5100s are trying to catch the other tanks, and they're behind. They're trying to actually approach them so that they can actually uh, anticipate the, I guess, the, the flag defend. Sudden strike painted on the side of the T-69. Yep. You see the anti-air double machine gun on the 5100s. Beautiful tanks, beautiful designs by Wargaming. Intrepid, Brazilian flag on one of the other AMX 5100s. It really is a testament to the really cool type of design for World of Tanks because sometimes I think, wow, man, this looks real. Um, and it's graphically utilized to where many different types of PCs can play the game. That's very, very important from a developer standpoint. Of You could have the gr most amazing graphics, but if only 5% of the player base can play it, that's a little bit tough. So you have optimization that happens. Uh, but the other thing I love to see is tanks exploding. Hopefully we can see some of that here pretty soon. Three minutes, six seconds left on the clock. Some uh, of the refuse to die tanks are inching ever so closely. We have yep. Anubis closer and closer moving out they're trying to just spot exactly where their opponents are so that they can send the two T1s and the AMX 5100 to the cap. The right AMX 5100 has been spotted, know. though, on the side of Scurry Hard. That one T1 notes that, hey, they've seen my tank, okay. guys. And now Plazzi's been spotted as well. Yes, sir. He's going to take a little bit of fire. And here we go. The engagement has started. That's right. Shots fired back and forth. Looks like Refuse to Die is on the up and up, taking down Blasi, almost 213 HP left on his tank. Dodama getting shot in his T69 at the same time. Rylak trying to cover from the rear, but it's not too uh, not too good. One of the tanks on the side of Refuse to Die does go down. Screenly gets the kill against Blasi, however. Anubis and Hired Gun taking the front. Hired Gun has taken no damage. And now the push from Refuse to Die on the opposite side. Yes, yeah, sir. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on over there as uh, Fnatic is covering one of the T1s. Oh, unfortunate, the other one actually died out. Of course, AMX 5100 isn't that fat. But still, 40 seconds to go in order to cap. Still a lot of tier eights alive, but the advantage actually goes to refuse to die. It does at this time, but they still have a minute and 45 seconds left to change that up. 5100, shots fired from Screenly, and it misses against Squirrelin. Squirrel and his 5100 trying to line up his shot. Squirrel gets hit 262, 372. Squirrel and low health. Oh. Screenly still left alive, and he gets the kill against Squirrel and the yeah, AMX 5100. And Dodoma chose the wrong person. Screenly was already three shells in. He should have taken out uh, Anubis in that uh, position. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get that. And uh, a lot of misplaced bullets. Son of Hail, gonna try to defend over here. Yeah, Rylak actually was defending and he was putting plenty of shots into World War II Fnatic, actually lighting him on fire, I think, for a moment. And then Rylak, he has to bail off the edge because yeah. his battle buddies are dead behind him. He's desperately gonna have to try and stop Cap here, but I don't think he's, they're gonna be able to pull it out because if not Cap, tier points. Yeah, that's right. Nine yep. to 33, huge lead. A lot of low health on the side of Refuse to Die, but Four seconds left. Three, two, one. It will be a victory and for Refuse to Die. No, son <laughs> of hell. Uh, he does go down. Win for Refuse to Die. Congratulations. It is one to two right now. So they're going to try to draw it out to go into overtime for the next uh, the next battle. We're going to find out after this short break. We're going to go into the game. Don't worry. When we come back, WGLNA day number four will continue. Welcome back to World of Tanks. I'm Clutch, showing me on the set is Greetorp and Rukil. We are going to be starting battle number five between Refuse to Die and Scurry Hard. Refuse to Die living up to their name and refusing to die. But uh, it was on Abbey, so we're going to have the next map be on Ensk. Ensk, Rukil, tell me about Ensk. What can happen? Why choose this map? Well, we've seen some teams pull out some pretty crazy stuff on Ensk, so 
I'm not going to say there's going to be one of two strats, but <laughs> there's one of two strats. They could go east or west, but then yeah. they go down the railroads. Then, then, I'm, then I'm just going to be thrown off there, and I'm like, well, if you make it work, you make it work. It's just like steps with the Castadores yes. and Himmelsdorf with the Castadores. Yeah, it's like, well, you can do what you want, but, yeah. you know. What would you do on this Well, map? what I would do is I'm a big fan of the field just as a scout player. Well, so I would like love to scout it out and have some great cover fire from some high areas, you know, firing down into the lumber yard, that kind of thing. Mm. Those kinds of firing lanes, you can get those, that high ground on the, on the east side. But, you know, without Artie, y east side's not so viable anymore. So for the most part, I'm a fan of going, well, most teams, I'm sorry, and I support this, go to the west and slow play it. Use superior brawling, get into a nice brawl. You know, uh, we've seen some nice successful pushes and, su and big failures by pushing down the one line. So it's a risk. You have to be dedicated to a push if you're going to do that sure. kind of aggressive move. You know what I, I like on Ensk if I'm in Scurry Hard's position? Uh, Ensk is definitely one of those maps where the train tracks are play such a vital role. If I know my opponents are going west, no matter what tanks I bring, I'm going east. Because I know it's an uncomfortable situation that they have to go to. Th they either have to cross the train tracks to engage me, or they have to fight at that cap area. And let's be honest, if I can set up a good defensive position, boom, I'm able to take the big advantage. And remember, Scurry Hard, all they have to do is draw right now, and they will win the series. It's a really nice way to play it out if you are ahead. You're cruel, dude. <laughs> I'm that cruel. is just mean. Let's well, take a look a at win to win as we start this next battle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Let's we can go. see it. As I say over the side of Fulcrum Gaming, let's tank talk. Great tour, what do we got? Two AMX 5100s, an IS-3, and a T, or excuse me, two T-69s over on the side who refuse to die. Interesting not choosing to pick out up those IS-3s nearly as much as we see them. Uh, like Scurry Hard is, two IS-3s instead of one. AMX 50, uh, two AMX 5100s and a single T-69. So you can see that trade out an IS-3 for T-69. Uh, that, that really tells us about their alpha capabilities. Of course, the alpha for those IS-3s are much, much higher than those T-69s. But the burst a lot better for the T69. We'll see how they're used as Wah Wah Wua refuse to die, pushing directly down the center. And this is what we can expect from them. They are oh they're man. Psycho Respect crazy. This sometimes. might not it is work. So cool. Respect, Rukil. They decided not to go east or west. This might not work because Scurry Heart is actually set up for this kind of attack. They have destroyed the entire barrier wall outside uh -oh. of their base. Uh -oh. So Refuse to Die is just going to walk into this, and I'm not sure if it's going to go in their favor. Oh, shots fired. Warlord 2 Fanatic gets hit. 7.43, now 4.50. Anubis just hitting right into him as he gets tracked, and boom, he goes down. Now down one of the eight-tier tanks. Quasar goes down again. One of the squirrel tag uh, goes down himself. Shots still being traded. Anubis being able to take down Connect almost. No, 1069. Anubis, however, is hurting pretty bad, but he's guarding the T1 with his life. If he goes down, his dead carcass tank will still guide him, and he does go down. Rylak getting a kill against Anubis. You can see how fast every tank is being taken out. It's because of the positioning of Scurry Hard. They've just been set up so, so nicely to receive something like this. And as you can see, the IS-3 over here is going to go down Fire here. The gun. T1 got destroyed. That's all the cap points, basically. And Valkyrie, Valkyrie is the last person standing. And guess what? Clutch. Down he goes. Down he goes. Scurry hard. Wins hard against Refuse to Die. Heads off for Refuse to Die for having something quick, but it was painful against them. And they were not able to take it.